بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي آمين يا رب Today I want to talk about how the anger of the jad the anger of the jal is what will cause him to enter into our world. What will cause the jal to be angry? So in order to answer this question, we have to look at some narrations of the Prophet ﷺ. And we have to discuss some of the issues. Now, I'm sure many of you know about Ibn Sayyad. Ibn Sayyad was a young boy born uh, in Medina at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Many companions, including Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anh, considered him to be Dajjal. And so, there are many, there's entire chapters in Hadith books on Ibn Sayyad and about him. Okay, And so, uh, let me show you one of the narrations that is very basic and very simplified. The Hadith says, Qala uh, laqiya ibn Umar ibn Sayyad. Ibn Umar, Ibn Umar is the son of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an. He met Ibn Sayyad, this man that was considered Dajjal by many of the companions. Fi tariq al ba'd al Madina, fi ba'd al tariq al Madina. In some of, in one of the streets of Medina, he met him. He happened to bump into him. Waqala lahu qawlan. So he said something to him. Of course, many of the companions of the Prophet were of the opinion he's Dajjal. So he said something that made him angry. So he became swollen. He became big. Okay. Until he filled the entire street with his, how big he was. So So Ibn Umar goes to Hafsa. And he conveyed to her what happened. فَقَالَتْ لَهُ رَحِمَكُمُ اللَّهِ May Allah have mercy upon you. مَا أَرَدْتَ مِنْ إِبْنْ سِيَادِ What did you want from Ibn Sayyad? أَمَا عَلِمْتَ Did you not know? أَنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم قال The Prophet said إِنَّمَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْ غَدَبَةٍ يَلْضَبُهَا he will come out, his khuruj will be, his emergence will be, his coming out will be with the anger of something that will cause him to be angry. Okay, so he will be, his anger will be by something that will cause him to be angry. Now, we will look at what some of the traditional classical scholars have said about this in a second. But what is important to know and what may be good news for you and me is that he will come out because of anger. Now, what do we know about anger? Anger happens when people feel something is out of their control. There are 12 types of angers in the world today, amongst human beings at least. And all of them have to do with the sense of losing control. The reason I say this is that what would make the Jal come out himself and not work behind the scenes like he was from the time of the Prophet وسلم, and even before that, if you study the history of Samari at the time of Musa وسلم, and the link between Fir'aun and Dajjal and every Prophet that warned against him. But Ibn Siyad was there from the time of the Prophet and then something will happen to his plan, to his system that he was creating so successfully. The system will begin to break and begin to fall and he will begin to lose and the Muslims will begin to rise because the Mahdi will already be there. That is what will cause his emergence. The success of the Muslims will cause the Jal to come out. Now, our mother Hafsa radiallahu anha, she says to Ibn Umar, what is wrong with you? That you would do something to make him angry. Don't you know the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Dajjal will come out because of his anger that will be 
he will be caused to become angry. He won't just become angry. He will be caused to become angry, and because of that causing angry, he will come out. So Hafsa radiallahu an, radiallahu anha, she said this. Now, who is Hafsa? Hafsa is the sister of Ibn Umar, meaning both of them are the children of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an. So anyway, now what will it be? What will happen that will cause the anger of the Jad? I will answer this question specifically, but right now I'll just leave it at that. The Muslims will do something. Muslims will do something that will make him angry. Now, Hafsa says to Ibn Umar that you shouldn't have made him angry because you know that's how the Jal will come. Why? Because at that time Muslims are strong. And there's no need to bring the Jal out on purpose because Muslims are doing fine. But we will be in a situation where we will be in tyranny and suppression and oppression and we will do something good and that will make him angry and then he will come out. Okay? And so... Let us now uh, continue from this narration to another narration on the same subject. This one is a little bit more detailed, but I'm going to give you a part of this. Uh, ukhra. I met him the second time. فقد, uh, now this is very important because even what the classical Muslims say about this is very important. His eye was swollen. Okay, Just remember this. His eye was swollen. Who's Ibn Sayyad's? Okay. Qala qultu mata fa'alta aynak. Ibn Umar said to Ibn Sayyad, who he thought was Dajjal, what has happened to your eye? Because we all know what the Prophet said about the eye of Dajjal, but there's more to it than that. You'll see that. Faqultu mata fa'altu aynuka ma ara. Qala la adri. Ibn Sayyad said, I don't know what uh, why my eye is like this. Qala qultu la tadri. وَهِيَ فِي رَأْسِكَ You don't know? You don't know? Ibn Umar, the son of Umar says to Ibn Sayyad, who, you don't know when the eye is in your own head? قَالَ إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ خَلَقَهَا فِي عَصَاكَ هَذِهِ And then Ibn Umar says to him, you can say mockingly, إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ خَلَقَهَا فِي عَصَاكَ Allah has cre Allah can create it, meaning your eye, even on your staff. Your stick that you got, Allah can create it on that. Now I want somebody to think about the word inshallah and the jal and stul kahaf and inshallah and the staff of Sulaiman wasalam, and how Ibn Siyad has a staff. And Ibn Umar says Allah can put your eye in that staff. But anyway. Let's something to think about, but anyway. Qala fa fa nakhara ka shadda nakhir al himar. So there was a sami'atu. Qala fa zaa ba'du ashabi. So there was this shriek, like a shriek of a donkey, like the, he heard this noise. Fa zaa ba'du ashabi. Some of the Sahaba they got scared. What is this? Fa ani darabtu bi asa. They thought I hit him with my stick. كانت معي, that was with me. Hatta kasarat until my stick got broken. وَأَمَا وَأَمَا أَنَا وَاللَّهِ مَا شَعِرْتُ And I swear by Allah, I was not aware of this. Okay, I was not aware of the fact that I had hit him and my stick had broken. So this is one uh, way of looking at it. The other is that uh, the stick got broken while he was there as kind of like a, a, a feat of miracle done by Ibn Sayyad. But anyway, he hit him is the more proper. And, well, for Allahi ma sha'irtu, right? فَأَنِّي ضَرَبْتُهُ بَعْدًا كَأَنَّ مَعْيَ حَتَّى كَسَرَتْ وَأَمَّا أَنَّا وَاللَّهِ مَا شَعِرْتُ قَالَ فَجَاءَ حَتَّى دَخَلَ عَلَيَّ أُمُّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فَحَدَّسَهَا فَقَالَتْ so he went to Ummul Mu'mineen, the mother of the believers. Haddasaha, he told her, Ma tulid alayhi alam ta'lam annahu qad qal. Do you know that the Prophet sallallahu already has said, Inna awwala ma ba'athahu ala nas. Don't you know the first thing that will cause him to have ba'ath, to be emerged in front of the people, ala nas, ghadabun, yaghdubuhu, an anger that will be caused by something that will be done to him. Meaning done towards him. Okay. 
So why are you making him angry? Okay? So this is very, very subtle, but I think it is very, very important about what will the reason is when the Muslims finally have to face the Jal, it's not going to be because we're losing. It's going to be because everything that they planned failed. Everything that they wanted, makaru wa makar Allah, wallahu khairul makirin, will come true. They plot and they plan. Maybe they were planning UFOs to come down, and he was, you know, planning his story how he was going to do everything. But nope, didn't work. And now he's angry, and now he has to come out himself because he can't rely on any of his stooges himself. So now he has he can't rely on his Ibn Siyads of the world, you can say. Okay. So now he has to come out himself and face humanity and try to prove to them uh, that he is a prophet or a god. Okay. So now, that having been done, let's see now another narration. So just uh, as a side point, if you want to look at all of the narrations on this hadith, right, uh, or how these are all the narrations, the green ones are the ones that are very, very authentic, and the pink ones that are less authentic, okay? But they're not really related to our, our topic here. These ones over here are. Um... And there's one over here that is, uh, I think I'll leave that, but this one is also very authentic. The story is almost the same, okay? Uh, in all of these, the story is almost the same. By the way, as a side point, those of you that might be interested, you can tell me in the comment section if you're interested. I'm thinking of holding a class on hadith and asnad and asanid. A class that will be enough that will be enough for anyone to take and they can make a tree of hadith a, a be able to look at a hadith and be able to tell not in the classical sense not in the classical sense but only in an academic sense in in the classical sense if a hadith is sahih or da'if or mawdu so on and so forth you won't be able to classify it exactly but you will be able to look at the chain of narrators enough that you will be able to tell that this hadith is reliable. Okay? Because to know more than that, you'll need more studies, and they're very specialized studies. But I'm thinking of teaching a hadith class uh, on this subject. So if you're interested, uh, I'm thinking of charging $50, but we'll see, inshallah. Free for the people who can't afford it, and the people that can afford it should then pay me $50 because they can afford it. And uh, that will help me move forward with the projects I want to move forward with. Anyway, so uh, hadith class that you will be able to take any hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu and you'll be able to mark if it is authentic or uh, or reliable and not reliable. And then the level of authenticity that will be have to be done in another class. But you know, especially with the tools we have in the world today, at least for as long as these tools exist. Uh, you will be able to benefit and look at a hadith and even all the hadith in the Kitab al and all the hadith in the book of uh, tri tribulations and the, the hadith that have to do with tribulations so on and so forth you'll be able to look at the narrations and be able to tell if they're reliable or not or is this a chain of narrations that's not reliable uh, I want to teach a class on that if you're interested please let me know in the comment section um, now let us move on to what the classical scholars have said about this narration of the Prophet or this narration by Ibn Umar on the statement of the Prophet that it will be anger that will cause him to come out. So what does that mean from the perspective of our classical scholars? And then I'll comment on what that could mean also further elaborating on what that can mean where we're standing today and looking back at history. So here we have uh, an Ibn Umar radiallahu anh, لقيت ابن سياد. He said, I met ابن سياد مرتين فذكر حديث أنه ألا أنه قال uh, he, you know, so ابن عمر uh, رضي الله عنه he went to Hafsa and she said the same words that we mentioned before. That don't you know that that the Prophet says his خروج. So the word خروج is used in one hadith, which is the more authentic one, and بعث is used in the other hadith, which is less authentic. على الناس غضبة يغبضها. Okay. The Rawi is, of course, Hafsa radiallahu anha, and the Muhaddis is, uh, you can leave that alone for now, and the uh, it's in the Musnad of 
and uh, the hukam of the hadith is sahih and the takhrij is by Imam Muslim, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal and other words that are similar. Now what does the uh, hadith mean exactly? I'm just going to read parts of this to you so it becomes clear. كان في المدينة غلام يقال له ابن سياد There was a, a, a boy, a young boy in Medina called Ibn Siyad. اسمه Safi. His name was Safi. وقيل Abdullah. And some said, no, his name was Abdullah. من اليهود المدينة. He was from the Yehud of Medina. Okay. Now, uh, وهذا الحديث يخبر نافي مولا ابن عمر أن Abdullah بن عمر رضي الله عنهما قابل ابن سياد في بعد الطريق المدينة. So this hadith tells us that, you know, Nafi, the servant of Ibn Umar, says that he met Ibn, um, Ibn Umar, the son of Umar, radiyallahu an, met Ibn Siyad in one of the streets of Medina. فقال له Ibn Umar, radiyallahu an, huma kalaman فكان سببا في غضب Ibn Siyad. So he said something to him, he said some words to him, he exchanged some words with him, and that was the uh, reason for his, uh, his anger. Uh, وفي رواية المسلم أنه لقي ابن سياد وقد نفرت عينه. And in one of the narrations of, uh, of Sahih Muslim it says and his eyes became bulged. أي uh, تور uh, تور مت وبزرت وذهبت بصرها. And the reason this is interesting because the then أنها uh, the reason this is interesting is because then the author then says أن أن يكون ذلك من آثار السحر. Okay, the bulging of the eye is one of the signs of magic. Now, this is something, dear brothers and sisters, I've seen myself. That uh, if I was sitting with someone who has uh, a jinn problem or jinn issues, and I read Quran, and his one of his eyes, especially the left eye, will bulge. So, uh, the 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 shar of the hadith, the 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 scholars of the old, they're saying, well, of course. You may think that he's referring to the eye because the Prophet mentioned that Dijal has one eye. And that one eye bulging means he's going to lose his eye and then the only the other eye is left. But here uh, it is correct that one of the signs of magic is, especially if Quran is read or if somebody is distressed and they have magic, one eye seems to bulge or irritate the person more than the other eye. Okay? So, and then he says some very interesting things. Okay? Uh, يخرج, he will come out من سجن في البحر إلى إلى الناس بفتنته في آخر الزمان. He will come out from his prison, from the ocean. That you know the hadith of Imam Tamim uh, 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 al-Darmi, right? He's in the ocean, in the island, locked up, right, in chains. So he will come out from there بفتنته في آخر الزمان. من how? by something that will cause him anger. And this author, this uh, shar of the old, it says, So he will be freed from his anger. By his anger, he will be freed. When he has so much anger, it will cause him to be freed from the chains that he will be in. خفت أن يكون ابن سياد هو الدجال. Okay, and uh, so it's talking about ابن سياد that you know he thought he's دجال. فيكون تعرض ابن عمر رضي الله عنه سبهم لخروج بفتنتي. Now he says قصة ابن سياد مشكلة وأمره مش مشتبه. The story of ابن سياد is difficult to uh, know the reality of it and his affair is one that is uh, you know kind of like not clear uh, the more better opinion is that he's one of the Dajjals or you can say the workers of Dajjal right that are liars he is different than Masihu Dajjal because Ibn Siyad had some of the qualities of Dajjal. وَكَانَ فِيهِ قَرَائٍ مُحْتَمَلَةٌ لَعَلَّ أَنَّ نَبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان مُتَوَقِّفًا فِي أَمْرِي حَتَّى جَاءَتْ أَمْرُ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى And it's possible the Prophet was waiting for something for, from Allah himself 
to be said by Ibn Ziyad, this man in Medina. Okay. كأنه غير الدجال الأكبر كما في قصة الجساسة التي رويها مسلم في أن تميم الداري. So as you know, Dajjal al-Akbar, the big Dajjal, and then he'll have smaller Dajjals, like Ibn Siyad in this case, right? But what the, I wanted to emphasize, what will cause him to be angry, uh, now we will look at uh, that specifically, okay? So in this narration, the Prophet Wasallam he says, uh, And if you notice the chapter, now this is a very important point, when a muhaddis writes a chapter, and he gives a title to the chapter, like Bab, the chapter of Ma ja'a fi alamatul khuruj al-Dajjal, what has come in regards to the signs of Dajjal coming out, that's his that's his understanding of the hadith, meaning the muhaddis himself, okay? And so, uh, and in this case, so Imam Tirmazi, and what is very interesting, by the way, about the Asanid of the Fitan, right? It's like the Sahaba, they had certain subjects they liked. So when you like pick up books of fiqh, the Asnad, like he said that he said, he said, it's very like similar. And when you pick up books of Fitan, you'll see the same Asanid repeat itself, like Hudayfa radiallahu uh, anh and others. They repeat themselves over and over again in those particular chapters. And it seems like when they knew about a subject, they knew more than one thing generally about the subject. So there are many narrations from specific individuals, you can say. Anyway, uh, so Mu'adh bin, Jab, uh, Mu'adh bin Jabal radiallahu anh, he narrates, the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, malhamatul uzma will happen first, fatul qustun tunya, خُرُوجُ الدِّجَّالِ فِي سَبْعَ أَشْهُرِ will happen in seven months. So, وَخُرُوجُ الدِّجَّالِ فِي سَبْعَ أَشْهُرِ will happen in seven months after the conquest of Qustantunia, which has not yet happened, which means Turkey will be taken over, Constantinople will be taken over, Turkey will be taken over, and then the Mahdi will free it and give victory to it, and then the Dajjal will come, or will the wars and the Fatul Qustantunia all happen within seven months. Anyway, that is not very important. We will come to see that when it finally happens. This hadith does have some weakness, but there is another narration uh, with the same words, okay, and in which the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Malhamatul Kubra wa Fatul Qustantunia wa Kharuj al-Dajjal fi Sab'a Ashkur. The Malhamatul Kubra, the Great Wars, the Armageddon, and Fatul Qustantunia, and the uh, the victory over Constantinople, and Khuruj al-Dajjal in seven months. Okay, this hadith is also relatively weak, but most of the hadiths that have to do with the end times, they are generally weaker, and the reason for that is because they don't have a hukam in it. So the tahqiq that was done in the early days regarding those narrations was less. So anyway, so. What will cause the Dajjal to be angry according to these narrations is the victory of the Muslims in the world. The coming of the Mahdi, that's when the victory of the Constantinople will happen according to other narrations, which I'm not going to get into. And you can tie this hadith with also the hadith that talks about the rise of Jerusalem, the fall of Medina, and the, uh, and the coming out of the Dajjal. Okay, that hadith that is very often talked about. This is the point. The Jal will get angry, and according to some of the muhaddis, muhaddisin, his anger is what will allow him to leave the chains. Allahu a'lam. We don't know for sure. And uh, his being angry will be because of the good the Muslims will do to vanquish his plans, to make his plans nil, because the Mahdi, will, his army will be growing and the Muslim empire will be growing. And so, uh, the main thing is, what can you and me do today to be part of that uh, victory? So the first thing you have to do is you have to decide which side you're on. You know, are you on the side of the jal and the, the the side of lies, or are you on the side of truth and haq? 
and you have to be mentally, emotionally, intellectually, physically ready for this uh, clash, you can say, between truth and falsehood. The, uh, the never-ending, uh, you can say, conflict between truth and falsehood until one wins. And the truth will win, and the gel will get frustrated, and he'll have to come out himself when all his plans will become nil. And uh, that is when uh, he's going to come out, when he's angry. And so that's good news for us because we will be, inshallah, able to do something to lead him to that position where the Muslims, inshallah, will be able to uh, make him angry and make him come out. So that's the good part. The bad part is what will happen. Of course, the whole scene from the fall of all the cities, the fall of the Jal, the occupation of the Muslim lands, the occupation of Turkey, all of this is going to be difficult. But more difficult than all of that will be the coming of the Jal because the whole world will be so desperate, right? The whole world will be in such a survival mode because there will be no food and there will be no goods and there will be no easy life. And people will sit by the grave and wish that they were dead. And in that time, he's going to come as a source of hope and a source of peace and a person with resources and he's doing miracles, and he has all the technology that we once had, and it's going to be very attractive. You know, just think of this, that when the Muslims were occupied by the West, how Muslims were enamored by the West, oh my God, look how great they are. And then now when we fall again, the whole world falls again, and the whole world goes into dust again, then he will emerge at that time again, attract with the same trick, the same trick, the Zinatul Hayat al Dunya that's mentioned in Sukhaf over and over again. He will come with that Zina. He will allure you with the beauty of the world. He'll promise you the world. Say, come towards me and I will give you Jannah in the world. Anyway, <clears throat> so uh, it is a good thing that Muslims will make him angry and he will come out and we'll finally have to face our destiny that we have to face that Allah has written for us. Uh, again, Please uh, look at the description, join my Telegram group, uh, you know, support us. I'm looking for funds right now for specific projects. If you don't mind, if Allah puts it in your heart, please definitely give. Also, if you're interested in the Hadith class, let me know. I'm trying to see if I can get 50 people or more interested in the class. And then I would definitely uh, look towards doing it, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Inshallah, pray for me and pray that Allah protects my YouTube channel. Inshallah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.